We are so glad you joined us today during this digital age. You could have tuned in anywhere else, but you chose PG, and we are incredibly grateful. Here's our pleasant planner for this week. Lord, we thank you for this place of gathering. Lord, we thank you for giving us the opportunity to come together and worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, we thank you for this place called Pleasant Green that has been here down through the years. Where many of us were introduced to your son, Jesus Christ. And Father, we're grateful for that introduction because it meant, oh God, an opportunity to be delivered from the penalty of sin. Father, we thank you that we have life in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. And Father, we thank you for the realization that God, thank you. you are alive and well. Yes. yes. Father, in spite of what might be going on around yes. us, God, we know yes. that you are true and living God. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Father, that you're yes. able to deliver us from any and every situation. Thank you. Yes. Father, we're grateful for the talents that you have placed throughout this place. Yes, Father. Father, for the musicians, the singers, the technicians, the Thank you. And even the preach word. Yes, yes Lord. Father, we Thank know you. that without the word, we would be lost. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. You said in the beginning was the word. Yeah, yeah, the word yeah, was yeah, God yeah, and the word yeah, was yeah, with yeah. God. Thank you. Yes, Lord. That word took on the form of flesh. Yes, yes, Thank in you, the Lord. person of Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. To show us the way. Yes, yes, Lord. yes. And Father, you continue to be the light that we should follow. Thank you. Yes, Lord. Father, thank you for the opportunity. To open up our hearts and allow you to you come Lord. and say, Behold, I stand at the yeah, door and yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, yes, yeah. If any man would open up, you'll you. come in and yes, sup with us. Yes, thank, you. thank you for not only being by yes, our side, but being in front of yes. us God, to lead us oh, and to guide us. Father, thy word have we hidden in our hearts yes. that we might not thank you. sin against thank you. But because we're in this flesh, oh God, we know there, there's thank a chance you. that we might thank not you, do just everything you, that yes. you yes. made thank for you, us to do. Yes, Lord. Father, when yes, we Lord. come up Forgive short, us, Lord. Forgive we pray for forgiveness. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Father, we're thankful, we're thankful because they, we know that you are faithful Thank you, Lord. and just. Thank you, Lord. And, Lord, that you would forgive us of, of our Thank sins, you, that you would Lord. cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, not only would you forgive us of our sins, but you said that they would be cast from us. Thank you, Lord. As far as the east is, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. never to come Thank again. You. And, Father, thank we you. just thank you right now. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to bring this worship service over the air, oh God, not yes, only the, the songs that you have blessed us to sing, but the preached word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Father, for we know that in the word we find hope, yes. we find light, yes. we find joy, we find deliverance, thank you, Lord. we find liberty. And we are grateful, oh God, that thank we you. have the opportunity to hear your word, thank but you. more importantly, we have the opportunity to do your word. Yes. yes, Lord. Father, we pray that's that you would be pleased that's with it. our worship today. Yes, Lord. Please. That's it. Father, we ask that you would help us to decrease. Thank you, Lord. That you might increase. Yes, Thank yes, you, Lord. yes, Father, yes. we pray that all glory you. goes to you. Yes, Lord. Thank Father, you. we hold you up. You said, if I be lifted Thank up, yeah, 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 yeah. that you would draw all our responsibility yes, to lift Thank up you, the name of Jesus yes. in this place today. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. So in this place, be glorified. Yes, yes. Be glorified. Please. Thank you. We thank praise you. Thank you. Thank you. If we had a thousand tongues, we couldn't thank you enough. Thank you, Lord. For Lord, we want to know that it's our desire to surrender all. Yes. All to Jesus, we surrender. All thank to you. Him, thank you. we give. Oh, yes, Lord. And we give it freely, oh God. Yes, Lord. We give it freely, yes, Lord. God. You said yes. before you this day, yes, we Lord. have the opportunity to choose. Yes, Lord. Life yes. or death. Yeah, 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 yeah. We choose life. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We choose life in the person yes, of Jesus yes, Christ. Yes, yes, yes. The one who came and died Thank you, Lord. Yes, thank you, Lord. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. We're Hallelujah. thankful for that, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Not that we were worthy. Thank you. Thank you. Not by works nor by might, but thank by you. your spirit. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. For the thank gift you. of eternal life. Thank, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Yes, Lord. Thank Amen. you. Amen. Amen. Amen.
God, we ask now that you smile upon us as we attempt to look in your word. And God, we ask that you uh, give us understanding. And Lord God, that you help us to rightly divide the word of truth. And God, we pray now that you be pleased with us as we stand behind this sacred desk. Lord God, let us not take for granted this sacred space that you have given us. God, we thank you for the pleasant parishioners and we thank you for the partners of PG. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let us all say amen, amen, amen. Amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters. If you would, turn with me to the hymnal of the Bible. If you would, turn with me to the hymnal of the Bible, uh, Psalm 139. And let's read together for our hearing, 1 through 6, and we will read the New Revised Standard Version. The New Revised Standard uh, Version. And there you will find words similar to this. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Brothers and sisters, for just a moment uh, or better, I just want to use as a title, Deep River. Deep River. Brothers and sisters, Howard Thurman, one of the black theologians of the 20th century, once said that the Lord is more 
than the tongue can tell. Lord is more than the mind can think. He wrote in his provocative work called Deep River that the Lord is more than the heart can feel. The Lord is more than I can bear. The Lord is my strength. When the day is done and in weariness I lay down to sleep, how would Thurman categorize the Lord as something or an entity that we cannot quite describe as human beings. Thurman's depiction of God in this poem was about the intimate relationship that God seeks to have with his children, very similar to the warming currents in the depths of a deep river. As we reflect on this season of change and in this season of challenge, one thing that becomes readily evident for all of us and for me in particular is that God is pulling us into a deeper relationship with him that moves us beyond the shallow pews of ritual into the profound depths of relationship with God. In other words, brothers and sisters, we should be moving from beyond the pews into a place of relationship with God. Therefore, brothers and sisters, I appeal to you that once you move beyond these days, and once we move beyond these times, this time of presidential campaign, this time of civil unrest, this time, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, that we experience today, once we move beyond the threat of uh, the coronavirus, which too shall pass, that you ought not to be in the same place spiritually that you were in March. I implore that you hear the voice of God as the voice of God is calling you and God is calling you to immerse yourself into the deep river of God's love and God's relationship. God is calling you into a relationship deeper than what you have ever experienced before. As we pay attention to Psalm 139, this kind of bold faith expressed acknowledges a God whose reality and presence permeates all parts of our lives. The psalmist illustrates the warm current of God's embrace as we experience a God who is far beyond our limited powers, but close enough for us to feel his grace, affection, and compassion. We serve a God that is close enough for us to experience his immeasurable love. David describes God who is so majestic and yet so mysterious that we, brothers and sisters, cannot comprehend him fully, but yet he highlights the fact that somehow we are able to know the creator but we only know the creator because the creator knows the creature. In other words, what I'm saying is that, brothers and sisters, we know God because God allows us 
to know him. What a wonderful thing to know that the God who is infinite, the God who is immutable, the God who is uncomprehensible, the God who is unknowable, chooses to enter into a relationship with us and then decides to reveal himself to flawed beings. The God who appeared to Moses in the mystery of a burning bush while at the same time revealing himself as the great I am. I am who becomes whatever you need. God who created the cosmos, God who created uh, yonder's macrocosm, and also the God who spent the microcosm into existence also attends to our very needs. According to the psalmist, although God knows us intimately and understands us completely, the psalmist alludes to say that the Lord has searched us and known us and discerned our thoughts from afar. Hence, the encouraging announcement here is that because we are known, we are able to know the unknowable. I'm persuaded, much like the psalmist, we too can know the unknowable because being known by God grants us a pathway into the heart of God. Much like when God manifested himself to Moses and when you seek out the heart of God, you enter a relationship with him and the Lord begins to reveal himself to you. That's why the apostle Paul told us in uh, Ephesians 1 and 9 that God made known to us the mystery of his will according to his purpose which he set forth in Christ. Therefore, brothers and sisters, when you know the heart of God, you know that God loves you. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, there are a few things that you need to know about God as you attempt to immerse yourself into the deep river of God's loving relationship. The first thing that the text attempts to teach us, brothers and sisters, is that God knows completely. God knows completely. Our text indicates that God seeks us out. God pursues us and God searches our hearts, which suggests that God is not only aware of our existence, but God is also intimately attentive to our experiences. I want to say that one more time. Brothers and sisters, what I want you to understand is that God not only knows that you exist, but God is also attentive to your experiences. God not only knows your neighborhood, but he knows your name. He not only knows your street, but he knows your struggle. He not only knows, brothers and sisters, uh, the issues of life, but he knows how you handle the issues. God knows your struggle. He not only knows your hood, uh, but he knows your hurt and your heartache. And as we considered this psalm, the key word in this passage, now if you all go with me to Sunday school for just a minute, uh, the key word in this particular passage is no. The key word is no. As a matter of fact, it appears uh, in this passage many different times. You'll see it 
in verse 1. You will see it in verse 2. You will see it in verse 4. You will see it in verse 6. You will also see it in verse 14. You will also see it in verse 23 twice. But brothers and sisters, as we delve into the word of God, all but one of these verses, it talks about how God knows us. It refers to how God has knowledge of us. Again, God is pictured by the psalmist as one who seeks us out pursues us within, and searches our hearts. One of the interesting anomalies in this account is that the psalmist uses the word no seven times. This is not by happenstance. This is not a coincidence because what I've seen in the biblical text is that the number seven means fullness or completeness. You just stroll with me through the scripture, Genesis 2. God created the world in six days, and on the seventh day, he rested. Because the seventh day, God enjoyed the fullness of perfection. The Sabbath day is on the seventh day. Exodus 34 and 21 says six days shalt thou work, but on the seventh day thou shalt rest. The children of Israel marched around the walls of Jericho for seven days and then seven times on the seventh day. Brothers and sisters, that's the number seven was not by happenstance, but it was because the Lord was trying to share something with us. Therefore, the psalmist was indicating to the reader that we are fully and completely known by God. And that is encouraging news because to be known by God means that we are never abandoned. To be known by God, that means that we are never alone. To be Known by God means that we are never ignored. To be known by God means that we are never isolated. To be known by God, that means that we are never deserted. We are never destitute. We are never foreign. We are never forgotten. We are never forsaken. We are never outside of the lens and the sight of God. Pleasant parishioner, I want you to know that when God has his eye on you, God is watching you. Deuteronomy says, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. God knows us completely. To be known is important. An old axiom says to be forgotten is worse than death. Nothing is more devastating to the human psyche than non-recognition. All of us desire to be known by God. So therefore, brothers and sisters, we, all, we know that God knows completely nextly we understand that God searches us or God acknowledges us intentionally. God acknowledges us or God searches us intentionally. I like the way uh, the common English Bible says, verse 3, it says, you study my traveling and resting. You are thoroughly familiar with my ways. That sounds like a God who is intentional about knowing us. That sounds like a God who is intentional about studying us. That sounds like a God who knows me and you from the crown of my head and to the sole of your foot. One of the exhortations and inspirations about God 
being intentional about searching us is that God knew us before we knew ourselves. To be known by God suggests that even before we have a conscious awareness of the divine, we are known by our maker. God knew us when we didn't have sense enough to know ourselves. And I'm glad that we have a few biblical witnesses that support the fact that God knows you before you can even know yourself. Come here, Jeremiah. I'm glad to talk to Jeremiah. Jeremiah was a boy prophet. Jeremiah didn't think that he was equipped for the job at hand. And when God got ready to use Jeremiah, he had to remind Jeremiah in Jeremiah 1 and 5, he said to Jeremiah before, I formed you in the womb. I knew you before you were born. I sanctified you. Before you were born, I ordained you a prophet unto the nations. And then he had to talk to Jeremiah because Jeremiah uh, got frazzled about the job that God wanted him to do. He said, before you were born, I knew who you were. And he said, say not that I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with you to, to deliver you, saith the Lord. What I'm saying is, pleasant parishioners and partners of PG, my friends who are watching today, although he did not know himself, Jeremiah didn't even know himself, Jeremiah did not know what he had been called to do. God knew him completely, and God was intentional about acknowledging his worth. And I don't know how that makes you feel, but that encourages me in that God knew who I was and that God was concerned about me before I was able to be concerned about myself. In other words, brothers and sisters, God looked at me and saw the potential in me. There's a story I share with you. A friend of mine told me, he said, man, Letcher, you sure do see the potential in other folks, and you see the potential in things. He said that because there was a time where I would gather up uh, some old items and then I would refurbish them. And then when I refurbished them, they looked just as good as new. Brothers and sisters, what I'm trying to share with you is that God does the same thing with you and I. He looks at us and sees a broken vessel but God sees the potential in you and I. That's how God's omniscient power works. That's how God's omnipresence works. That's how God does. And I think Marvin Sapp said it like this, that he saw the best in me. When everyone else around me only saw the worst in me. God knew that I would be somebody even when I felt like I was nobody. God knew that I would be a disciple even when my life was disheveled and disordered. God knew that I would carry his word even though I didn't know about the word. God knew that I would be triumphant even in the midst of my troubles, trials and tribulations. God knew that his children would have lives 
and that his children would have life and life more abundantly. God knew that we would have an opportunity to the tree of life because his son rose from the grave. That's why the Apostle Paul says that God's love exists. And in Romans 5 and 8, he says that God shows his love for us in that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. In other words, God knew that perhaps some of us grew up a screw-up. But God also knew that at some point we would wear a crown after you bear your cross. We share this with you that God knows completely. We also know that God searches intentionally. And we also understand that God embraces emphatically. God embraces emphatically. I'm leaving you now, but brothers and sisters, God embraces emphatically. Verse 5 says that you hem me in behind and before. You lay your hand of blessing on my head. Here, the psalmist is suggesting that we are surrounded by God's presence. And I want you to know the brothers and sisters, that you are surrounded by God's presence. There is nowhere that you can go that you can get outside of God's presence. The psalmist is letting us know that God is a God uh, of security. And God is the God of... Uh, uh, who holds us and embraces us tight. God's presence, in this sense, of the psalmist becomes a liberating experience. It's not meaning that he's holding you in one particular place, but what it means is that God is protecting you. And one of the things that we must understand as uh, believers and uh, uh, pleasant parishioners is that God is holding us. I remember one thing, and I'm done, that God is one who holds us, as the seasoned saints would say, in the hollow of his hand. When the Lord embraces you, what I've come to understand that in my short life is that God will not allow anything to happen to you. That's what Jesus is trying to share with us in John 10 and 28. He says, I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one would snatch them out of my hand. God holds us in the hollow of his hand. If you don't get anything else out of today's word, brothers and sisters, I want you to get that God searches us intentionally. God embraces us emphatically. And God knows us completely. The door of the church is open. I pray that something was said in this particular lesson that will help you to develop a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, we are in a time of confusion and chaos and it pays for you to know Jesus Christ.
Therefore, brothers and sisters, the door of the church is open. The door of the church is open. The door of the church is open. I know that uh, the physical door of God's church uh, in the ministry of Pleasant Green uh, is closed. But one thing I share with you is, brothers and sisters, uh, that we are still doing ministry and we are still accepting those who would like to understand the love of Jesus Christ. With that being said, brothers and sisters, if you'd like to be a member of Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church, uh, you can do so uh, by contacting a Pleasant parishioner. You can do so by emailing. If you would email ghpruitt at gmail.com or, brothers and sisters, you can call our church office and our church office is listed here on the screen. We want you to be a part of our church and we want you to be a part of our ministry. Also, brothers and sisters, we are thankful for all of you who uh, are continuing to be faithful in your giving. Thank you for continuing to be faithful in your giving. Uh, there are a couple ways you can give. If you want to give directly to the church, you can give two ways. You can send a check or a money order to Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church uh, at 1220 REV GH Pruitt Place, St. Louis, Missouri 63113. You can send a check or a money order there. Or well, brothers and sisters, you can also uh, give online at GH uh, www pgmbcstl.org you can give online brothers and sisters again we are thankful for your presence we thank we are thankful for all of our guests who have come and logged on we are a church who is striving to become pleasantly purposeful for all people and with that being said I want you to know that you are welcome to log on at any time. God bless you and may God keep you. We want to just say a word of prayer. God, thank you for this time that we have with you. God, we ask that you bless those who are logging in. And God, we ask that something is said uh, that will bless your people in the name of Jesus now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of God's glory with exceedingly joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory majesty dominion and power both now and forever may we all say amen